least at least one. Yep. And Matthew Kachuk was real sad. <laughs> yep. So we're gonna talk about Michael Hutchinson like you did all day yesterday. Let's go! Why not? The Toronto Maple Leafs! I guess my brand is a yell and scream. <laughs> I don't script these. Are the leaves all right? So what you get is from the heart. Welcome to LFO. Victory puppy, Ziggy. This is here. It's like you're feeding the victory puppy. Ziggy, I don't want to alarm you, but you were named after the most famous Calgary flame of all time. How does that make you feel? Leafs win! Four! three over the Calgary Flames. We'll talk about the Muzzin and Kachuk drama a little bit later in the video, but first, a note on last video. Uh, you might have noticed, I'm a big fan of taking it to 11. Last game, that was too much. That was the wrong kind of too much. How about that? Chirping's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's sports. But I don't want any beef. I just want to have fun with people. And last time, I felt like it went to a place. So I just wanted to have fun with the next installment of Leafs vs. Flames, and I did. Part of the reason that game was so fun is Leafs fans and Flames fans alike could ask two questions each. Are the Leafs good? Are the Flames good? Are the Leafs bad? Are the Flames bad? And I can confidently say after watching that game that the answer to all four of those questions is yes. So let's talk about it. The Leafs starts have still been a little come see come saw so this was really good in the Leafs own zone Wayne Simmons gets the puck and hands it off to Jimmy Vesey Justin Hall identifies the situation and the Leafs actually get a partial three on two Vesey hands it off to a wide open Justin Hall who takes a muffin of a shot at Jacob Markstrom but there was no intention of scoring and I think Markstrom knew this because he makes the stop Wayne Simmons streaking in with the shot Markstrom spectacular save choo choo the Wayne train again one nothing Leafs I really do wish I could use footage for this goal because it highlights a couple great things. With Zach Hyman moving up the lineup, I was a little weary of Wayne Simmons joining the third line because I actually like what Keefe was doing with it. Like, if he's the third fastest guy on your line, that's a pretty fast line. Wayne Simmons joins that line, and I'm less sure. The toughness is there, the net front presence is there, but th this is a line built on speed. Is he gonna be a fit for the line? And I gotta say, one of the number one things I've noticed about Wayne Simmons since he started playing with the Leafs is... This guy's actually kind of fast. Look, he's here on a one-year, $1.5 million deal because he's had a few rough seasons because of injuries. One thing you do not expect out of an injury-plagued player is speed. But based on this play, his speed is obviously there. His instincts are obviously there. Net front presence, he's willing to muck it up. There's no reason to assume Wayne Simmons can't be an extremely effective Leaf. But another thing I'd like to highlight, part of the reason that was a partial three-on-two and Wayne Simmons had two whacks at it, Michael Backlund's back check. This is how the play starts in the leave zone. That's Backlund with his hand on Simmons there. And Simmons just leaves him in his dust. The two Calgary defensemen commit to VC and Hall. Maybe it was a miscommunication, but Backlund's not hard enough on Simmons. And he almost gets it, and it just feels like with one extra stride, he could have actually got it. So is that a Backlund mistake? Maybe, but Simmons, again, with speed, I did not expect. So Leafs early 1-0 lead, less than four minutes in, and the period continues, and hey, they're looking pretty good. And wow, Calgary can't make a pass. And wow, Calgary can't make a pass the red line and what are the shots what the shots were 10-1 by the end of the first the only mistakes the only mistakes that I saw the Leafs make Pierre Engvall took a penalty which the Leafs killed off without allowing a single shot and I think there was one two-on-one that Zach Bogosian just calmly broke up with a stick like why did you even try that and in between all that the Leafs had a power play which is great now a big change that the Leafs made to their power play last year is Matthews went on the right Marner went on the left so that Matthews can make stick go boom we can call that the boom setup right because slap shots are boom one timers are boom but this wasn't the boom setup it was Marner on the right Matthews on the left that's the pew setup so Matthews can go pew 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 Marner brilliant pass over to Matthews oh Austin Matthews with his fourth of the season already I'm surprised it's not his 40th with a shot like that off the bar and in if you're a goalie what do you do? <laughs> so this is great. We're all happy, right? Well, except for Leaf fans, and we're kind of weird. Because the Leafs are up 2 nothing after one period and a variety. They're getting 5-on-5 five five goals and power play goals. They're out shooting their opponents 10-1 to one after one. And the defense, my goodness, the defense. Freddie, good job on the one save, but he didn't have to do anything because they're doing a great job in their own zone. But it barely ever even got to their zone because they were playing smothering, attacking in the offensive zone and in the neutral zone. The Calgary Flames couldn't get anything done. This is as good as the Leafs have ever looked. When's it gonna stop? When, when is the fall going to happen? And I have an answer for you. As soon as I tweeted this, 
Look at you, you idiot, you big silly idiot. Look at him, knows exactly what he's doing. Smile with your mouth closed. Try it, try it once. You're a bum, learn how to skate. Nobody loves you. I have all my mentions committed to memory. Don't worry, I'm used to it. <laughs> Now my face is gonna be red for the rest of the video because it's winter and my skin sucks. So, the Leafs begin the second period by <laughs> immediately looking nothing like they did in the first. To the Flames' credit, they were way better. In that, they were able to complete a pass. I was watching in the first period like, I I'm proud of the Leafs, but like, is the ice bad? The Flames obviously deciding they need a fast and furious start to the first period, so they're working, they're digging behind the Leafs' net. For the most part, the Riley-Brody pairing, oh my goodness, what a breath of fresh air for this team. But this right here is not good enough and cannot happen. That's Johnny Gaudreau, and it doesn't matter who the other guy is, because Johnny Gaudreau's there! Flames fire the puck on, it's loose in front, Johnny Gaudreau is all alone. Well, he's not all alone. Dominic Simone was there as well. But no Leafs! And just like that, after the Leafs' best period of the season, the Flames are a shot away from tying it. And this is what Frederick Anderson has to deal with and why I'm kind of reluctant to be too hard on. Because at this point in the game, he has allowed one goal on, what was it, two or three shots? Which statistically is bad, but look at that garbage! And mistakes are gonna happen, but the Leafs have gotta keep stuff like that to a minimum if they're gonna have any chance of success. This is what's been so frustrating about them. They're clear clearly good, and I think they're getting better. It's the lapses that just erase all the good work that they do. To the Leafs' credit though, this does not end in a Calgary onslaught, they actually answer right back. And it's a fourth line shift too. Jake Muzzin, excellent outlet pass to Pierre Engvall, he's on the right wing, sick saucer pass to Travis Boyd, who is playing in his first game as a Leaf, and I see the play breaking out, I'm like, okay, Boyd is open, but can Engvall get the puck to him? The silkiest pass in the world, Boyd fires it on. He had Joey Anderson with him too. Also his first game as a Leaf. Beats Markstrom. 3-1 Leafs. Travis Boyd with his first goal as a Toronto Maple Leaf and Pierre Engvall with his first point in approximately an eternity. And by that I mean like a straight up calendar year. He probably would have gotten one sooner if it weren't for the world. Yeah, I've only played like 20 games over the last year. Oh no, were you scratched? It's more like Earth was scratched. A lot of you are seeing what I'm seeing out of Engvall. He's trying really hard. He's super fast. There's not a lot of players like him. Someone that lanky and that speedy. He's gotta cut down on the penalties. That's another one for him that he had in the first period there. But if he can make soft little plays like that, skilled little plays like that, whoo! That's nice, and you're gonna stay in the lineup. Like, add to that offensive play the fact that he can penalty kill, the fact that he can play both the wing and center. He's too versatile of a player to keep down for long if he plays at his best. And this, that play right there, that's his best. As for Anderson and Boyd, uh, leave a comment in the comment box down below. What did you think? Spezza and Barabanov getting the night off so that Boyd, who scored a goal, and Anderson uh, could get into the lineup. I like them individually and I thought they had a few good shifts. It just felt like that line was hemmed in their own zone a little too much. But the Leafs are finally doing what we've been begging them to do for years now. Like Miko Lettinen, for example, haven't even mentioned him yet. He gets into the lineup and Travis Dermott was scratched. Travis Dermott did not do a thing wrong, nor did Spezza or Barabanov. It's just the Leafs have guys. And when you're playing and exerting energy and you're not getting any two day breaks, you're gonna need some time off. A rested guy is better than a tired guy. Or or a beat up guy. I wonder if we could see Travis Dermott get back into the lineup and Miko Lettinen stay there because Bogosian has had a rough couple games. Not bad, he just keeps blocking shots and getting beat up. And speaking of Bogosian, I need to go to bat for him here because uh, people were blaming him for the second goal I saw and I can see why. Milan Lucic wide open in the slot, basically uncontested, snipes on Frederick Anderson. You can say what you want about Milan Lucic these days but he's still an NHL player and if you give him enough time like that he can snipe, so you might have seen Magosian not really doing anything. What I saw is a guy going, oh, fellas, a little help? Valimaki breaks into the leave zone, and Mikko Lettinen is like, that's my guy. And he's stapled to him, and he stays with him the whole time. He gets no support from any of the three forwards, though. Simmons kind of sees Bennett, but he doesn't quite pick him up in time, and Bogosian's left sitting there. He could have played it better by committing to, like, something. <laughs> but I'd put that particular goal on other guys on the team before Bogosian. And just like that, even though they score in the second period, Period, outshot 18 to 5. 
Their second period was so bad it pretty much erased the first. Flames were out shooting the Leafs, except, look up there, you'll see on the same clock they're being outshot on, they also have the lead, but penalty trouble will kill you. John Tavares with a holding call on Dominic Simone, Flames get to work. Flames dump it in, it takes like a weird bounce off the glass. And at that point it's just hot potato, jump ball, Monaghan gets it, gives it to a wide open Johnny Gaudreau. Freddie doesn't even have a stick, so he's able to just snipe it. That's easy for Gaudreau, too easy. And you can hear the Foot off of the gas, press conference cliches from here. The Leafs, it's now a tie game after arguably the best period they've played all year. Luckily though, just like the 2-1 goal, the Leafs don't get down on themselves and get right back to work. Leafs top line with a bit of a flurry. Valimaki tries to clear it. Morgan Riley stops it on his backhand. Feeds it to Austin Matthews, but he doesn't have any options. Who should he give it to? See, Backlund realizes at the last second, the child's right there, you idiots! And Mitch Marner with the one-timer! It's, it's like a half slapper, half wrister. It's half pew pew and half boom boom! Marner scores! Legendary Sally! And Mitchell Marner scores what would go on to be the game-winning goal. The defense tight Tightened up after a pretty rough period and a half. Freddie Anderson making a couple pretty big saves there down the stretch. There was even one, I didn't see it on the Calgary broadcast, on the highlights, but on the Ontario broadcast, that save that Freddie made where he went from one side to the other and grabbed it. I, I think it was on uh, uh, Lindholm. The goal graphic came across the score bug. Did anyone else see that? That's how good the save was. It was a gimme and he robbed it. It was a little concerning at the end. Joey Anderson with a puck over the glass. I swear they lowered the glass. But the Leafs with an excellent penalty kill 3-2-1 the clock winds down and the game ends without incident so at the end of the game after the buzzer Jake Muzzin flips the puck at Matthew Kachuk Kachuk gets very upset about that and tries to get at him the refs try to separate them and they paw each other and whatever Muzzin did get two minutes for unsportsmanlike conduct. And I gotta say to the ref, you're absolutely right. There was a little bit of lead up to this. I, I don't know what battles that Kachuk and Muzzin had gotten into throughout the game. I don't know if anything was said. I don't know anything like that. But Kachuk going for a puck in the corner in the final seconds. He doesn't know how much time's left. He just takes a swat at it. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt that he was going for the puck, but he missed and he kind of slashed Muzzin. Muzzin, I don't think, was very happy about it and he flipped the puck at Kachuk. He did not Daniel Alfredson blast the thing at Scott Niedemeyer's ankles. He flipped the puck into his logo, which is disrespectful and mean. It's not dangerous. What I thought was funny is people comparing it to the, uh, what allegedly happened with Kachuk at the end of the last game because oh, he just can't understand why someone would accuse him, a guy who relishes the role of best, why someone would suspect him of doing something untoward. I think it was accidentally on purpose, which is still on purpose. Both things done on purpose are mean and unsportsmanlike and not nice. But to me, one thing is dangerous and the other thing is, well, it's a dick move. No one has a problem, like an actual problem, with Kachuk being a jerk. That's fine, that's his role. You'd love him on your team? Of course, I, I want guys on the Leafs to be bigger jerks. I don't want them to do something that's dangerous though. Like I got a couple, where were you on the Wayne Simmons hit on Manjapane? I tweeted that it was a bad hit as soon as I saw it and he was penalized for it. It was a jerk move, nothing more, and it just sets up the next Leafs Flames game pretty well. Before we get to questions, obviously Jack Campbell out for a few weeks. Michael Hutchinson is now the backup. Now, Kachuk, that's not his fault. Campbell hurt himself before that. I don't have that many thoughts on it. Like this, this, Hutchinson's the third goalie and now he's the backup. Well, he's an injury away from being the starter. That is every team's conundrum. If two goalies get hurt, they're one and two, then their third goalie is their starter. And you know how many teams are stoked about that? Exactly zero. Like the Leafs are still a few injuries away from being in the same position as Vegas from a few years ago where they're literally calling up high school students. Hey, I know you're getting ready for that exam, but we were wondering if you could play the Sharks. And you might remember situations where teams use their third or fourth or fifth goalie and they did really well. Those are the exceptions, not the rules. As someone who was critical of Michael Hutchinson and did not like having him as the backup goalie, I trust him as the third. Steve, that doesn't make any sense because he's the backup goalie now. No, that's how the third works. All I'm saying is don't be like, what if Freddy gets hurt? As if when both Freddy and Jack are healthy, you can just go, ah, who cares what happens to him? There's two of them. Cross that bridge if you get there. And a shout out before the questions. The Toronto Six of the NWHL picking up their first ever NWHL win with a 2-1 win over Boston of all teams. Ah, Toronto versus Boston and winning. 
but a change. The first ever game-winning goal in Toronto Six history scored by Michaela Grant Mentis. Congratulations to her and congratulations to the entire Toronto Six squad. Eat a pancake, score a goal, Digit Murphy the GOAT questions. Is Zach Bogosian underappreciated? Yes. Like, he's gonna make mistakes. Like, you could argue he did make a mistake on the Lucic goal. Alright, well, Riley and Brody made a mistake on the first goal and I don't see a referendum on them. <gasps> I use the referendum word. But I just feel like... I don't know, maybe we've been through a lot as a fan base, but we saw that signing and we went, ah, this is the one we will not like. And to be fair, his first two games were doo-doo. But like since then, like, Bogosian's been pretty good and he's been blocking all kinds of shots. Like, I I'm worried about him. I'm not asking you to give his jersey, but I am asking you to give him a fair shake. Wasn't it thoughtful of Muzzin to try to give the game puck to Kachuk? It was. Veteran move. Hi Steve, hope you and your family are staying safe these days. My question is, what do you think about Wayne, 24? Thank you for that, Alan. Is probably the best addition on the Leafs roster this season. I don't want to say best because I don't want to take any credit away from any of the other Leafs. Uh, like, like Brody has been such a breath of fresh air, even with the mistake in this one for his pair. I think a lot of the benefits of having Wayne Simmons on your team are going to be benefits that we're not going to necessarily see. Like, what he does to the group inside the locker room. But he's been tremendous value so far. He's got two goals, greasy one in front and another one where he worked really hard, faster than I thought. He's been at different spots in the lineup. He's fought for the team. Great player. And ooh, let's end psychologically. Are the Leafs starting to look like the team that the Leafs used to be afraid of? Starting to. I, I like that. Justin Hall, after the game, said, oh, this team's nowhere near where it could be. He's right. But they're showing little spurts. Like, three goals against in this game. That's big. Like, the first two games weren't very good, but, like, they've been keeping it to pretty much just two. But they're a team that gets some saves. They're a team that's taking care of the puck better in their own zone. They're a team that is more smothering on the forecheck, which is something that has been a bit of an Achilles heel. They're a team that can occasionally get a bounce to go their way because they're creating havoc in front of the net. They're not afraid. They won't back down. They'll hit. They'll block shots. I don't know if it's a team that the Leafs were afraid of, I just think they're turning into a good team. A complete team, a well-rounded team. A team capable of being capable. I'm not gonna say it, I'm gun shy after the tweet. So, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video, click subscribe. If you really like to tell all your friends, this season just keeps chugging along. We got a late game next. This one against Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers. Didn't we just see them? Ah, welcome to the 2021 season, my friend.